Hi, everyone. Welcome to this week's webinar. This week, we have a photographer spotlight with Prudence Rufus. Hi, Prue. How are you? If I unmuted, I'd there be fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm quite well. I caught you off guard. So. <laughs> you did. <laughs> well, um, we're so happy to have you, and we're happy to have everybody here who is already has already logged in. It's great to see some familiar names in here. Um, today, Prudence is going to be talking about budgeting and bookkeeping for business. My name is Prudence Rufus, and this conversation is generously sponsored by Shootproof, which is why you guys are all here. A um, little bit about me. Uh, by the way, this photo was captured by Crystal Bird of Lovebird Photo. She's in the Atlanta area and she's amazing. Uh, I am the convergence of opposites. I can change the oil on my car. I can change the tire. I can I put in an oxygen sensor. I can do all of that. And I can go shower, put on a dress, pretty lipstick, and be completely at ease. I'm a tomboy. I'm a girly girl. Um, I'm right brain and left brain, so I love the creative stuff, which is where photography comes in, but I also love the logical stuff, which is where the finance comes in. Um, my background, my personal background, my corporate background is that I've worked for a couple of banks, insurance companies, financial institutions over the years, and thoroughly enjoyed my experience there. I think the favorite job that I had was when I was working with small business owners. And my job was to get them from the box of receipts to some kind of financial clarity about what's happening with their business. And so me being able to merge my two worlds has been something that I never saw coming, but I am delighted and I truly enjoy supporting photographers and creative entrepreneurs as they navigate in this space. My goal for each person that I work with <coughs> is that you will move from financial confusion to financial clarity, one step at a time, one conversation at a time, one new thing that you implement in your business at a time. That's what I want to see for everybody. I want you to run a profitable business and I want you to run a business that pays its fair share of taxes so that you can reap all the benefits <clears throat> that come to residents, especially of the United States, um, when it comes to, to paying taxes and reporting your income adequately. A little about me. I believe that you should focus on what matters most. Shootproof also believes that. And for me, here's what matters most. This, these photos were taken in Panama. It was February of this year. It was my birthday and we went to Panama to hang out for a couple of days. No kids. This was amazing. And we hired a photographer um, before we got there and we captured some photos. Uh, my husband and I, we have been together for 25 years. We have been married for 18 of those years. And um, he truly is my compliment. These two humans came from us. My son, the quiet, introvert, shy guy, decided that for prom last month, he was going to wear a gold sequin suit. And to say we were surprised is an understatement, but we got the gold sequin suit, we got it tailored, and he enjoyed prom, and he he was truly uh, the talk of the town in his gold sequin suit. Um, my daughter, she's 12 years old, and she is headed to high school in a little bit, not next year, the following year. And we're quite excited to see how she is, how she will evolve from the middle school space to the high school space. That's my focus on what matters most. That's why managing my finances, both personally and especially in business, matter to me. Because if something happened to me, they are the ones that would truly be most personally affected. In terms of photography, this is where you can find me, Photos by Prue, um, at Photos by Prue on all the social media platforms, photosbyprue.com um, for photography. I took the bold leap and decided that I was going to close my calendar for the rest of the year, but I still have appointments up until June and like one in July because I needed a creative sabbatical. After 12 years of being um, in business as a photographer, as a full-time photographer, I, I needed a break. I needed a, a sabbatical, a creative sabbatical, so that I could put a lot more attention on Master Your Mint. Master Your Mint is the other side, the financial side of my world. You can find me on Instagram, on Facebook, at Master Your Mint. By the way, I would love if you would follow me on 
Instagram. I'm being brave these days and I'm doing reels. It's really outside of my comfort zone, but I must say that I am enjoying them. So um, please, you know, let me know how you feel about the reels that, that, um, that I do. The, your feedback is important to me. Um, my website is masteryourmint.com. No www. I have to figure out why that's not working the way I think it should. Um, but masteryourmint.com will get you to uh, my website. Thanks, Kelly. Kelly just posted a link to my Instagram. Today, our conversation is going to be about budgeting and bookkeeping for business success. And we'll talk about each topic separately, but we'll also talk about how they relate to each other. I ask this question every single time I have a conversation with a, a business owner about their business, the finances of their business. Do you know if your business was profitable this month? We are 19 days into the month. So let's say, do you know if your business was profitable from January to April? Answer that question in the, in the chat for me. Do you know if your business was profitable? Maybe your business wasn't profitable, but do you know? Yes, I see yeses, yes. All right. Irfan, I think I'm pronouncing your name right, says you don't know. We'll talk about how you don't know. Yes, Q and I work together very closely to get that going. Um, Mo says, what if you're afraid of bank statements? We're going to talk about how to navigate bank statements. We're going to have some tools as to how to get that going. So yes, if you know whether your business is profitable, amazing. If you do not know whether your business is profitable, you're in the right space and we can talk about it. I believe that you should use your money to live the life you want. Now, living the life you want varies from person to person. For me, living the life I want means that I send my laundry out and I don't do it anymore. Living the life I want means that the cleaning person for me comes and cleans the house so I can spend my time doing other things that make me happy. Living the life I want for some people is driving a certain car or living in a certain house or going to a certain going to certain places for vacation, you determine what living the life you want looks like. And my goal is that you will have enough money in your business, that you will know your profit margins, and you'll be able to use your money to live the life you want. Today's goals for these conversation, for this conversation is to give you the tools to manage your business finances intelligently. I want you to be able to go to your tax preparer, your CPA, and hand them over. You don't even have to go to them. You can just email them a PDF with your profit and loss report so that they can file your tax return. I want you to be able to, at the end of second quarter, because quarterly taxes are going to be due in a little while, that you'll be able to pull a report, see what your profit and loss was, and pay your quarterly taxes on time very easily because you've been keeping track of things. I want you to be able to have intelligent conversations around your business finances. So who is this class for? This class is for people who are tired of guessing about their money. This class is also for people who want to level up and improve their finances. There's always room for improvement. As much as I do this to support other people, I am also improving and I am also growing. And there are always spaces where I can tweak things or I can improve things, improve the process um, of managing my business finances. So I want you to answer this question in, in chat. Which side do you fall on? Are you guessing about your finances and you want clarity or are you ready to level up? Where do you file? Thanks, Alyssa. I will reach out to them and fix that. Yes, Mo says he's guessing and he wants clarity. Yes, because we don't want you to be afraid of those bank statements anymore. Absolutely. Oh, Chelsea, we're gonna fix that for you. Awesome. Hi, Renee. Renee is ready to level up. I'm ready to level up with you. I will tell you that Getting your finances together, both personal and business, is not a one day, one hour, even one week or one month process. 
your business finances, your personal finances are continuously evolving. And as your business finances, as your personal finances, as your life evolves, so should how you manage your money. How you manage your money at 20 is very different from how you manage your money at 30. Very different from how you manage your money at 60 when you're getting ready to retire or 70 or 90 when you've already retired. Um, and so it's an evolving process. So don't, don't ever think that you're finished. You're always evolving. I have to tell you this though, before we talk, uh, Lori, I'm going to help you to figure out where to start. Um, your business and your business finance and your tax situations are unique. There are nuances to who you are. Are you single? Are you married? Do you file married, file and joint? Do you have three kids, four kids, zero kids? Um, is, do you have a W2 job? Do you have a, um, another business? Do you have rental property? Do you own your home? There's so many other things that come into the picture of your finance portfolio that someone needs to have a conversation with you about those things. If you, if, if you are to be completely ethical and, and accurate with your tax filing. So I want you to know that I'm going to talk about some general principles that will make you have those conversations from a more intelligent and empowered space. But please consult with your accountant, your CPA, your tax preparer, your lawyer to discuss your specific case and to get advice that's tailored to your needs. So today we're going to talk about bookkeeping and budgeting. Let's start with bookkeeping. What is bookkeeping? I Googled it and I should have written the source, right? Um, bookkeeping is the process of recording your company's financial transactions into organized accounts. Sounds complicated. In some ways it is, but in some ways it's also not. Why should you, why should bookkeeping matter to you? One, the IRS requires it. We'll talk about that in a little while. Two, you need to know so that you can know whether you are running a profitable enterprise or not, whether you're profitable this month or not, to know what your seasonal fluctuations are. Is Christmas your busy season or is July your busy season? The other thing is that it affects your life now and when you retire. Um, I want to say about 90 days or so before your birthday, you get a, a nice letter from the Social Security Administration. And in that, they will go back every single year to list the income that you made. So when you were 16 years old and you had that job at the library, that was my first job. I was a page at the library. Um, there'll be a record of how much money you earned when you are 25 and you're working for some other place, there'll be a record of that. And every single year, there'll be a record of that. When you get ready to retire and to claim social security, that information matters. And that information allows you to, allows the government to know how much social security that you qualify for. And so knowing your bookkeeping, reporting your income and your expenses accurately affects your life now and affects your life when you retire. I can't tell you how many, how many business owners, um, don't report their income or under report their income. And then when they retire, when they are not able to work anymore, that they have no resources available to them or very little. Here's what the IRS says. This is directly from the IRS website. I literally copied and pasted. This is what they say. If you are in business, there's not a required method of bookkeeping you must use. However, you must use a method that clearly and accurately reflects your gross income and expenses. Let me go back to that. Oh man, I don't know how to go back. Here we go. Let's go back. If you are in business, and if you're here, I'm going to assume that you believe you are in business. There's not a required method of bookkeeping that you must use, but you must, and they actually use the word must, use a method that clearly and accurately reflects your gross income and expenses. Now, some people are going to say, what's gross income? Gross income is all the money that you bring in. And we're going to talk about 
all the money that you bring in, however people pay you cash, cash app, uh, bartering, all of that matters. Any money that you bring in, that's your gross income. And then your expenses are money, it's money that you spend. So when you buy a new camera, when you pay for your shoot proof sub subscription, when you buy an album because you're selling it back to your client, all of those things are expenses. So some of us really need to ask ourselves the question, is this a business or is it a hobby? Regardless of your answer, both answers are powerful and empowering. But I think if you're in the space where you acknowledge that this is a business, then that means that you have to approach your photography differently than if, you're, if photography for you is a hobby. If it's a hobby, there is less of a requirement for accuracy. There's less of a requirement for record keeping. If it's a business, that requirement is higher. If it's a hobby, generally, um, the IRS says hobbies are not for profit and they're generally just for your enjoyment. I was a hobby photographer from the time I was in high school. I would photograph things just for my enjoyment. That's it. Then I shifted to being in business. Now this came directly from irs.gov. They have a whole list of what, what's considered a business. A business should carry on the activity of the business in a business-like manner and maintain complete and accurate books and records. If there are losses, your losses should be due to circumstances beyond your control or are the nor or are normal in the startup phase of your type of business. So there are some people um, in many types of businesses that have a business and year after year after year, 10, 20 years, they keep reporting a loss. That is a trigger to the IRS to say, this person is not running a business. This is a hobby and they're just trying to get some tax deductions. And that's a trigger for an audit. None of us like audits. Even if you have all your information together, nobody wants to experience an audit. So we know you have to track your income and expenses, but what of your income do you need to track and what of your expenses you need to track? The answer is everything, every single thing, your income and your expenses. Here's what you need to, here's the part of income that you need to track. Cash. Somebody gives you $2,000 in cash for buying an album, you need to track that. Somebody gives you, somebody gives you $500 for their photo shoot, you need to track that. You need to track electronic transactions. So you use uh, your Square or your Stripe any of those business, um, those systems, business to consumer systems that allow you them to pay and you to collect money. PayPal, all of those systems, even if you use Cash App, that's an electronic transaction that needs to be tracked. Now, there are some conversations that, you know, we can have on a more personal basis if necessary about how to keep everything streamlined because there's a process to keeping things streamlined. There's some of us that get cash, we get checks, we have electronic transactions. Sometimes it's Cash App, sometimes it's Square, sometimes it's PayPal, and things are all over the place. Sometimes the transaction deposits into our business account, sometimes it's our savings account, sometimes we just spend the money straight out of PayPal, and so we never really know what the income is. You still need to track it. However, if that's your way of operating, it certainly makes the process more difficult. And there's a, there's a process to go through to kind of streamline that and clean that up so that everything goes directly to your business account. Gifts are also considered income. Tips are also considered income. So if your client gives you a tip, $100 for overwhelming customer service, you're expected to include that as a part of your income. Barters are also included as a part of your income. So I decide that um, the I need my kitchen repaired. And the guy that does kitchen wants family photos or he's getting married and he wants me to photograph his wedding. And he said, okay, let's trade. I'm still reported. I'm still, record, I'm so, I'm, I'm still required to 
put a dollar value on that barter and to report that barter as income. So what to report in terms of income? Everything. However you get money, however you exchange services, that's what you need to report. Cash, electronic transactions, gifts, barters, tips, all of it. It's so much easier when you have separated your business finances and your personal finances. A lot of us, when we start, we just ran everything through our personal account. Somebody gave me $200, I would just go deposit it in my personal account, or I might just spend it. I might never deposit it. Somebody sends, an, sends me a transaction through PayPal. PayPal is not linked to my business account. I may not even have a business account. And so everything goes there. Same thing with your credit cards. It is so much easier when you have separate accounts, because even if you don't have a bookkeeping system, if you have separate accounts, you'll, it will be much easier for you to backtrack and to get the, the information, at least from one source. When it comes to expenses, the IRS says this, that if the expense is necessary for running your business, or it's an ordinary expense for running your business, then you should count it. Necessary and ordinary. Now, there's some people, well, let's backtrack. The IRS started in like 1862 where they were trying to get money for the war, right? So they've been around for a long time. And when your preparer files your tax return, they have to disclose the name of your business, of course, and EIN, if you have that, um, the type of business you run. So what are you doing? Are you a farmer? Are you a photographer? Are you a nursing home? They have to, you have to dis define that. And then there's a code that's attached to each type of business. So if you imagine that every year the IRS gets millions of returns and every year they have millions of returns for each category of business. And they've been doing this since 1862. So they have a vast amount of data to know what is normal, what is average within a business. They know what is normal and average in a particular year. They know what's normal and average in over time, in 10 years, in five years. Now, as long as your expense is legitimate, necessary and ordinary, you should still record it and still consider it to be a business expense. However, do not try to slip through the cracks and cheat the system because they have far more information than you do about trends and accuracy. So track all of your expenses, all of them. When you're tracking it, there's some things that you need to record. You need to record the date. You need to record the name of the merchant. You need to record the amount, the merchant or the, or the customer. Um, you need to record the amount of money that you received. You need to determine what category or purpose this serves. So if it's an expense, was it an advertising expense or was it expense for supplies? And you need to hold on to the receipt. Now, receipts are not needed for filing your return. Your preparer doesn't need your receipts. If you are ever in the situation where you are audited, and by the way, only 4% of people are audited, and of that 4%, half of them are random audits and half of them are targeted audit, audits, traditionally. We'll probably see a little more audits because of PPP and because um, there's some validation that is likely to happen. That's been the conversation in the finance world. Um, but you keep track of the receipts so that if you're ever audited, you can validate what the expense was for. Now be careful when you go to the store and they print a receipt because over time, the ink on that receipt tends to, to um, degrade. And so I would say, take a photo. Um, there are a couple of ways you can do it. And we'll talk about the, the way to do it with software, but uh, at the very least, take a photo of it, put it in a safe place and hold on to it. Now, one of the things that I do is that I create a folder for every year. So there's a 2021 master your mint receipt folder. There is a 2021 photos by Prue folder. And whenever receipts come in electronically, 
I'll send them to that folder. Or if I have a receipt in, in, in hand, I'll take a photo of it and I'll forward it to that folder. Another way is to create a Google Drive and to make copies of the receipts and put them there. That's one way. Back to bookkeeping, we're talking about how to keep track of your bookkeeping, right? Because there's some pen and paper, uh, there's some ways. Pen and paper works. There are plenty of people, if you imagine in 1862, there was no computer. And so there, the business owners would have a book and they would write down all of their transactions. So pen and paper works. Excel spreadsheets make me happy. And so you can also record your transaction in an Excel spreadsheet. Most banks will allow you to download a CSV file of your transactions, and then you can open that CSV file in an Excel spreadsheet, and then you can sort it and organize it. So Excel spreadsheets work. I love Excel spreadsheets um, for many reasons, but, but um, bookkeeping is one way you can use an Excel spreadsheet. My favorite way of bookkeeping, though, is to use software. Um, software makes the process easier, makes the process more streamlined. I think Mo was asking where to start. Um, software will make the process much easier for you. Software can pull in your transactions automatically from the bank and you can then categorize them. Um, I personally like QuickBooks. QuickBooks happens to be my favorite, but there are some others. Um, QuickBooks, FreshBooks, Wave Apps, Zero are probably the most popular ones. Uh, Wave Apps is free. Um, but if you can imagine that as you pay for the serve, pay for the software, that it becomes more robust and there are more options for reports. There's more options for automation. There's more options for um, noting recurring transactions. Uh, I have a discount. I am a QuickBooks Pro. So I have a discount that you can get six months off the freelancer version of QuickBooks if you go to this link. Um, it normally is $15 a month, but for six months, you would pay $7 a month. Got it? Okay. Um, speaking of expenses, the if you use any of the software and if you file a tax return, you will see these categories. This is actually a copy of the Schedule C. Schedule C is the document where you report all of your business finances, both the income and expenses. Every single expense has to fit in one of these categories. Advertising, car and truck expenses, commissions and fees, contract labor. That's one of the ways that the IRS has data on this type of business tends to do a lot of advertising. This type of business tends to have a lot of supplies. This type of business tends to have a lot more travel. This type of business, their wages are high. So all of your expenses need to fit into this category. There is a other expenses category, and then there is a, usually an addendum if you need it to list what those other expenses are. It's very easy to just lump everything in other expenses and then have a really big other expenses category, but uh, sometimes you need to break it down. Now, keep in mind, these forms have been around for many, many years, and so there are things that show up now that weren't available when the forms were created. For example, software, we use a lot of software. There's no software category. So under other expenses, you could have a, a line that says software and how much you pay for software. Um, I would encourage you though, that you think about what the purpose of the software is. So for example, your website is for advertising. So the software expense for your website would fall most appropriately under advertising. If you text money to this number, or if you visit this site, you will get a list of those expense categories. If you're using software, it's automatically included. If you're using pen and paper, or if you are um, using Excel spreadsheets, those expense categories will matter. So if you notice on the expense category, there's no category that says album. There's no category that says postage. And so it's important if you're using a, a less automated way that you know exactly what those categories are so that you can create the document that your preparer needs. 
one of the benefits of, of bookkeeping is that you'll be able to run monthly, quarterly, and yearly profit and loss statements. Depending on the software, you might even be able to have a balance sheet, but profit and loss statements are the very minimum that you need. You need to be able to know. Remember when I asked the question at the beginning, do you know if your business was profitable this month? If you have access to uh, software, it will automatically do it for you. If you don't have access to software, then you need to create that profit and loss statement. How much money did you make? When you go to buy a car or buy a house, one of the things that they often ask for is your profit and loss statements from your business. Do you intend to use your business income as you make uh, other types of financial transactions? That profit and loss statement becomes important. There are a lot of people that um, qualified for some of these PPP loans and grants, but weren't able to get them because they did not have accurate bookkeeping. They could not run a profit and loss statement. They had no idea how to pull together what their income was. They had no idea how to pull together what their expenses were. Um, and so bookkeeping not only saves you money, but in many cases, it allows you to qualify for, for money. This is how the IRS calculates your profit. All of your income minus your expenses will equal your profit or your loss. So if you made $50,000 for the year, but you had $25,000 in expenses, then your profit is $25,000. If you made $50,000 for the year, but your expenses were $55,000 for the year, then you have a loss of $5,000. There are so many people that I talk to that don't know whether they're making a profit or a loss until it's time to file their tax return and they're gathering this information. And it is at that point that they realize that they have spent more in their business than they made, which means that they're, they're operating at a deficit and that money is coming from somewhere, somewhere else. Usually it's debt or usually it's another source of income. You only pay taxes if you have a profit. And so your tax liability is calculated based on your profit. Now, there, there are other things that come into calculating your tax liability. So whether you're married or single changes the tax category you fall into. Um, whether you have children, that affects your tax category. How much you make, because the tax brackets vary based on income levels. So all of those things come in and there, there are um, charts that the IRS has um, that you can actually calculate and measure that. So when, um, when you file your return, your tax liability is based on your profit depending on how much your tax liability is, will determine whether you need to file quarterly returns or not. That's another situation that requires a more personal conversation to know what your, what's your situation, what your status is and how to calculate um, your quarterly tax um, requirements. That was on bookkeeping. You guys still following along with me? Okay. Awesome. 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 Thank you. All right. So we've been talking for about half an hour. Yes. Awesome. So let's talk about budgeting. Budgeting and bookkeeping are intimately related to each other. If you can imagine, if you can create a budget, then you can do bookkeeping. If you can do bookkeeping, then you can create a budget. Denise, my goal is to make it understandable. Um, and there are complexities that can be added with layers, but if you don't understand what, what the foundation is like, then adding those layers is only adding confusion. Mo says he has a bookkeeper because he's afraid of statements. I want to congratulate you for having a bookkeeper. That's amazing. But I also want you to make sense of it. You know, I tell, um, I tell my clients all the time, I said, um, if there's a problem with your finances, your tax return, your business finances, I might have a penalty. The IRS might ban me from filing tax return. I may even have a little bit of jail time. Maybe, maybe. However, the largest punishment comes to the person whose return it is. And so even if someone else is responsible for doing the work, you that doesn't absolve you of the responsibility of understanding what they are 
what what numbers they're using. It's not foreign that your preparer does your return and there are missing pieces. That's not foreign. That happens quite often. But if you understand your return, you'll be able to have that conversation with your with your uh, bookkeeper, or your preparer. And if you're doing it on a regular basis, if you're meeting every month or if you're meeting every quarter, then certainly it's easier to catch um, errors than it is at the end of the year, in the following year, April, when you're now trying to hustle to get that information together. So absolutely take the time to do budgeting. We are 19 days into May, 19 days into the fifth month of the year. It is better to start now than it is to wait till next year this time to start. So much easier. Better to backtrack to January than to have to backtrack to January 2021. So let's talk about budget in a bit. Remember, our goal is to use your money to live the life you want, right? And bookkeeping helps you to keep a track of the historical data. So it's keeping track of money that's already spent. It's keeping track of money that's already earned. Budgeting allows you to do some forecasting. It allows you to forecast what you, what you want to make, what you want to spend, and what your goal, and you can tie that into your goals for finances. Where bookkeeping really falls into budgeting is that if you are able to budget, if you are where bookkeeping, sorry, falls into budgeting, is that when you have good bookkeeping records, you're able to see trends in the market. I work with a couple of people who are tutors and they know that in the summertime, their tutoring business goes down. And then somewhere around September to October, that's their highest. However, they you all you'll also know when your expenses are lower, when your expenses are higher. So you'll be able to better predict what's happening with your business. You'll be better able to budget. So if you know that your expenses are going to be higher in February, then way back in October, when your business is booming in October, you need to prepare for what's about to happen in February. Does that make sense? So budget in is simply a spending plan that takes into consideration both current and future income and expenses. Yeah, Chelsea, feast or famine. And budgeting helps you to do that. We're going to, in a little while, go to a spreadsheet that will, that I'll show you how, how budgeting can work. And yes, a spreadsheet. Budgeting is your roadmap. You know, when, um, when I'm going somewhere, sometimes I know the directions, sometimes I don't know the directions, but I pull up my Google Maps and I put the address in and it gives me directions from my location to there. It also gives me what the traffic patterns are currently. It also tells me if there's any hiccups or roadblocks. Um, and it also tells me how long it will take me to get there. Your budget does the exact same thing, but for your money. So you get to determine this is where I want to be. And this is the budget that's going to give me the roadmap to get there. Yes, there'll be hiccups, but just like your Google Maps reroutes you in the same way your, you can use your budget to reroute your, your process. Sometimes you, the, the Google will tell you that, okay, you'll get there in 32 minutes, but you actually get there in 23 minutes. Or sometimes you actually get there in 45 minutes, but you still get there. Your budget allows you to create a roadmap and to consciously be aware of when things are shifting, to consciously be aware of how you're progressing, to consciously be aware if you need to reroute. So both in your personal life and in business, your budget is your roadmap. How to budget is usually the hard thing. Now, there are some people who will say, oh, create a budget for the, for the whole year in January. I think that's awesome to do if you have been budgeting all along. If you have not been budgeting all along, then start small. Budget for the week. Budget for the month. 
start small. Sometimes you might need to budget for the day, depending on where your finances are. Here's the steps for business budgeting. And we're going to go to a spreadsheet, then we're going to, we're going to do some of that together. Start by listing your fixed expenses. So the things you know that are automatic deductions, the things you know exactly what the dollar amount is. So you know how much your shoot proof subscription is. You know how much your Photoshop subscription is. If you have um, a CRM, you know how much that CRM subscription is. If you have a studio, you know exactly how much you are required to pay for the studio each month. So start by listing those fixed expenses. There will always be expenses that show up when you're making money. So for example, when I am, when I am selling an album, I also have the expense of buying the album. That's not a fixed expense. With that expense, I'm collecting money and a portion of that money I'm going to spend. We just want your fixed expenses, the things that show up. If you don't do business for three months, these expenses will still be deducting from your bank account. So start by listing those expenses. There are also some annual expenses that people have. So we're budgeting, let's say for the month. There are also some annual expenses. So like conferences, conferences tend to be a big money spender. You want to approximate um, how much you're gonna spend on hotel, travel, ground transportation, registration fees, um, travel, airfare or drive-in or all the expenses, total that up and list your annual expenses. You're also going to determine how much you want to pay yourself. And here's the most important part. Once you have this information, it gives you, it puts you in a powerful place to be able to price your offerings accordingly, to be able to price your photography. So you might be pricing your photography at $25 a session. But $25 session might not even cover your fixed expenses. $25 a session might not even cover um, how much you want to pay yourself. But if you gather that information, it will be helpful. Um, a little more complicated space, but we'll, we'll mention it, is that of your income, set aside 30% or so for income taxes not sales tax, that's a different tax, but income taxes, both federal income tax and state income tax. 30% is on the higher side. Um, and it's the more conservative thing to do is to, to set aside 30%. However, I would rather have the money and not need it than need the money and not have it. So if I set aside 30%, but I only need 10% of that, I can choose whether I'm gonna reinvest that in my business, whether I'm gonna pay myself, or whether I am going to just let it sit. So set aside about 30%. Um, let's talk about this spreadsheet. And I say I'm going to make the spreadsheet fancy and share it. Um, so if you, it should be up, right? It was up earlier, but apparently now it's not. So let's see if it will refresh and show up. And it's a very simple spreadsheet. Very, very simple spreadsheet. Um, I'm gonna make it pretty and fancy, but it's a very, very simple spreadsheet. Um, Oh, they just did something funny. Let's see. Can you guys see me and hear me? Am I still here? Can somebody comment? Yes. Okay. All right. Awesome. Okay. All right. So in this very, very simple spreadsheet, the goal is for you to, to see what's going on. So Flowdesk. Flowdesk is a newsletter software, right? Flowdesk costs about $19 a month. I like to put the withdrawal date because it allows me to be able to predict, okay, so the first half of the month, this is how much I have. The second half, this is how much I have. It's just a, it's just information. Um, if my shoot proof subscription is $25 a month, I'll put that there. Um, 17 hats is the CRM I happen to use and I'll put that there, right? 
So the total of these is $74. And the system will add it, the, the spreadsheet. This is why I like spreadsheets. You can create formulas. So if 17 hats for me jumps to $45 a month, watch this number down here, press enter, it, it jumps to $89. So these are my total fixed monthly expenses. But what if you have annual expenses? So let's say you pay for smart slides and you pay for it yearly. So smart slides, you're going to pay $299 and that comes out in May. Again, I like to list the month that it comes out so that as you're doing your cash flow planning, you can see, okay, if I have these transactions happening in, in May, then maybe this might not be the month where I buy a new camera. This might be the month where I allow those transactions to happen. If I'm planning to go to a conference, um, my favorite is the photo cookout lately. Um, then I plan those expenses and I've done some mathematics on that. And that's $2,000, right? About $2,000. <laughs> that's my goal, Mo. So then you're going to add up. You don't have to add it. The system will add it for you how much these transactions are. So let's say the conference this year, I need to plan more money because, you know, things are getting expensive. I change it to $3,000. So watch this number change. Okay. So when I look at my monthly fixed bills and I look at my annual expenses, right, what will happen is with the annual expenses, if I divide this number by 12, you'll get this 274. Again, it does it automatically. Let's change smart slides to 199. See, that changes, right? And this changes. This number shows up here. So this number will automatically populate here. So when I look at my monthly fixed expenses and then I add in the monthly distribution of my annual expenses, then I know that every month I need $355.58. And so what I can do with my business is then I can plan what my pricing needs to be. We haven't even added in here how much you're paying yourself. We're just talking about keeping the doors open. If you're paying yourself, then you need to add that amount in as well and divide it by 12 and determine how much you need to pay yourself. This number helps you to price yourself profit profitably. So if you know that you are, you need at least $355, right? And you want to pay yourself $1,000. So you know that your business needs to generate plus 30%. So your business needs to generate another $1,300 to be able to pay yourself 30%. All right. So then you would need to earn about $1,600. Do you want to earn that with one session? Do you want to earn that with 10 sessions? If you want to earn that with one session, then your average session income needs to be $1,600. If you want to, if you're able to do two sessions, then your average session needs to be $800. If you want to do 10 sessions, then your average session needs to be $160. But by knowing this information, it not only empowers you to have good bookkeeping, it not only empowers you to manage what's happening with your money, but it also empowers you to price yourself properly. Got it? Does that make sense to everybody? Awesome, 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 awesome. I'm still working on making the spreadsheet pretty. I use it every day, but I use it in more one-on-one -on -one situations. I'm making it pretty and I wanna add in some of those other formulas about how much to pay yourself and, and um, how many sessions you wanna do. So if you text this number, um, when it's ready, I will send it out to you. Awesome, thanks, Karen. We're wrapping up, but Rome was not built in a day. So I don't want you to enter this process of leveling up or of getting clarity with the expectation that it will all happen quickly. There are people that I've worked with that are in this chat or in this group and that, and we've worked together for a year or more, three months, four months, that this is a process. This is something that is constantly evolving. So give yourself grace as you are going through the process. This is why it's important to me though. 
because the art is my passion. I can take photos all day. It's my hobby. But the business is necessary so that I can do the art for me. I want to buy new equipment. I want to go to conferences. I want to do all of those things. The art is my passion. The business is necessary so that I can do the art. Did you get that, Brianna? Text money to 938-777-7537. Got it? Thanks, Kelly. This is where you can find me. Photography at Photos by Pru. Uh oh, that's not what I want. Photography at Photos by Pru. Master. Hey, Fru, can you hear me? Uh-oh. All right. Can everyone else hear me? Okay, cool. Um, I'm hoping that Prue will jump back on here to answer the questions we have. Um, but if she's got issues, I mean, good timing, right? Like at the very end. <laughs> so um, what we'll do is I'll go ahead and put the questions that you guys have asked in the questions tab and reach out to Prue and ask her to get, I'll give her your email addresses and ask her to get in touch with you directly. Um, but we'll give her a minute here um, to see if she'll jump back on. <clears throat> uh, it looks like she lost her internet. Um, so I wanted to let you guys know, this is actually a series of webinars that we're doing with Prue. If you haven't um, checked out the first one that she did with us. Oh, here she is, she's back. <laughs> Uh, go ahead and finish what you're saying. Oh, yeah. I was just going to, I was telling everybody that they can um, go to our help center. Hope maybe Kelly can drop the link um, in the chat for the first webinar you did with us, the tax tips ones. And then this is part two. And then you'll be back later this year for part three. So, um, but go ahead and finish what you were talking about. I'll get out of your hair. <laughs> I'm excited. Thank you. Sorry about that. I don't know what happened. When technology works, it works. And when it doesn't, it's a whole problem. But this is where you can find me. Um, right now, I'm still doing clarity calls for free. You can have one clarity call and we can talk about what your goals are and needs are um, for free. They're about 20 to 30 minutes. Um, that will change towards the latter part of the year. Um, but you can always go on, on Master Mint. You'll have access to my calendar and you can book a call and we can have a conversation. Yes, I love shoot proof. I'll tell you my shoot proof story. Shoot proof was the first thing I did in business when I wanted to look and feel official, when I wanted to feel like a business owner, when I wanted to stop sending people their photos on a disc. Yeah. Uh, shoot proof. I've been with shoot proof since the very, very, very beginning. Yes. Um, shoot proof says focus on what matters most. And for me, focusing on what matters most means being able to do the things that bring me joy. That includes my family, and that includes that just bring me joy. A spa day, maybe. I looked up a spa recently that they have your swimming pool in your hotel room, and I am going to book a time there because I want <laughs> to do the things that bring me joy. So focus on what matters most. In order to do that, you do have to keep track of your business finances. You do have to create a sensible business budget. You do have to take your head out of the sand and make sense of what's happening. You can find me by texting money to that number or going to that link and I'll send you the list of tax categories. It is my pleasure to be here. I hope that you have gained something. And if you have any questions, I'm not sure how much time we have left for questions, but if you have any questions, feel free to ask whether you reach out to me personally or whether you ask openly. Prue, there's only two questions in there. Do you do you want to okay. see if you can knock those out and then sure, maybe any you. other ones people can just reach out to you? Awesome. Um, Antoine, that question is answered. Uh, Nicole, what would you recommend as far as budgeting for someone who's just getting started in their business? I feel like I'm figuring out my expenses and also have more startup costs at the moment and invested more in education right now. Yes. 
when you start up any business, photography included, the, the expenses are high. And the IRS actually accounts for that. Um, I would say for your budgeting, you need to make a wish list per se of what are the things that you know that you will need in business and figure out what that will cost you. Once you figure out what that will cost you, it will help you to determine what your pricing is. Um, in terms of pricing, one little tip that worked for me, um, it worked for me when I was evolving, you know, like moving my price from one stage to the next, is that I would tell people that, oh, my price is actually $500, but for the next three months, it there's a discount of, 150 and so the price is 350. So when I'm ready to shift to the $500 price, they're already emotionally ready for that $500 price. But if you just walk in and say, okay, sessions are $25, then they will continuously expect $25. So that that works for me. Um, TD, how do you put a price on a barter as income when you are exchanging services? Do you also consider how much you have been paying for the other service as expense? I don't understand the second question, but the first question is how do you put a price on it? If I'm bartering, let's say uh, cleaning services for photography, those cleaning services have a value. Under normal circumstances, I would pay three hundred dollars for those for that cleaning service, and so the income is 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 priced is valued at $300. I hope I've answered your question. If I didn't answer the second question, um, feel free to reach out to me and I'll be more than happy to respond. Awesome. Thank you so much, Prue. It was so great to have you again. Always a pleasure and always so much information. I, I mean, what you, you have a real gift of like taking what can be really um, intimidating and turning it into, as people were saying in the chat, something like really simple and um, within reach, I think, for some of us who might have been more intimidated to begin with. Um, so that's awesome. I love it. Thank you so much. And um, everybody keep an eye out um, on shootproof.com slash events for upcoming webinars. So you can see when um, Prue will be coming back with us. And um, I hope everyone has a great weekend, kind of early. It's, it's Friday Eve. So we'll say have a good weekend. <laughs> and thank you. Thank you again so much, Prue. Have a great one. All right. Thank you, everyone.